Coming up on DTNS, Apple and Google cave to Russia. Free streaming TV is on the rise, and Utrecht plans to power its city with solar cars. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, September 17th, 2021 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And I'm Chris Ashley, co-hosting today on DTNS. Uh, drawing the top tech stories from Cleveland, Ohio, I'm Len Peralta. And I'm Roger Chang, the show's producer. We were just uh, talking about our favorite burgers on Good Day Internet. You want that wider conversation, you got to become a patron. Patreon.com slash DTNS, where you can join our top patrons like Justin Zellers, Eric Holm, and Carmine Bailey. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. The Financial Times and cyber intelligence group CyberInt released data from a recent investigation into Telegram that the messaging service has seen a 100% plus rise in Telegram usage by cyber criminals following users switching to Telegram after a change in WhatsApp's privacy policy that asked users to accept a revised policy allowing it to share data with its parent company, Facebook. So basically, like everybody else switched off WhatsApp, the criminals did too. And English inventor Sir Clive Sinclair passed away at the age of 81. Sinclair was the inventor of the ZX series of computers, which were famous for being the UK's first mass market home computer for less than 100 euro. He also invented electric vehicles, releasing the Sinclair C5 electric vehicle in 1985 and the Sinclair Zyke electric bike in 1992. So rest in peace, my man. Microsoft announced it will release the perpetual version of Microsoft Office 2021 on October 5th for general consumers. It's available for enterprise right now. That's the version that doesn't get feature updates or cloud services, but doesn't require a subscription. You pay for it once, you can keep using it as long as you want. Microsoft is also testing a new Windows 11 Photos app in its dev channel, offering a film strip of small thumbnails at the bottom of the window when viewing an image. There's also a new multi-view feature to compare a selection of photos in a single window. And the editing toolbar now offers quick access to third-party photo editors. Hmm. WeChat updated its messaging service to let users link to previously blocked services from Taobao and ByteDance's video app Douyin. It comes, this comes after the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology for large tech platforms in China warned tech companies to stop blocking links to rival services. OnePlus is bringing Hasselblad's cinematic X-Pan camera to the OnePlus 9 and 9 Pro through a software update. The 9 Series cameras didn't initially offer much around OnePlus's multi-year collaboration with Hasselblad, but the new update adds an X-Pan mode for the OnePlus 9 Series camera, as well as some patches. The X-Pan mode replicates the focal lengths, the colors, and the processing of the original Hasselblad X-Pan camera for the phone, which lets users capture wide aspect ratio images right there from their OnePlus phone. All right. Let's talk about Russia. The Russian government has ordered Apple and Google to remove an app called Umnoye Golosavnye, uh, or Smart Voting, Umnoye Golosavnye. Uh, it was meant to guide supporters of Alexei Navalny in how to deprive President Putin's party, United Russia, of votes in regional and federal elections. Russia's communications regulatory agency Roskomnadzor ruled earlier this month that the app constituted election interference and warned that Google and Apple would be fined if they did not remove it. TikTok, Facebook, Telegram, and Twitter have all been fined by Russia this year for failure to remove illegal content. So at first, Google and Apple held the line. After that warning, bailiffs visited Google's offices to enforce a court-ordered measure against the app, but Google didn't budge. However, neither Apple nor Google removed the app until the government said it would prosecute Russian employees of the companies for violations of election law. It appears that rather than subject employees to imprisonment, the companies complied with that order. Chris, Apple and Google taking a lot of heat for this uh, today. A lot of people accusing them of, of caving to an authoritarian regime, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Apple and Google not really commenting a lot other than I think Google saying it's the law, we have to comply with the local laws. But some folks are saying, You've, you've stood up to other uh, regimes. You've stood up to other countries. Apple famously wouldn't give in to the FBI in the United States. What made this different, do you think? Yeah, well, you know, they, those companies have plenty to be held accountable for in, in the world of tech. But my God, guys, come on. Let, let's step back for a second. There are employees who are about to be imprisoned for this. 
that this, you know, you can toe the line as much as you want, but once you start affecting your own employees' lives, that first off, you got to imagine the PR for that is going to be absolutely horrific. But just the humanity of that, you don't want employees being locked up because of a fight, you know, that that's not really your fight. You know, you can do the best you can to kind of effectuate change in other countries, but it's not your country and they have their rules. And honestly, the people have to rise up if they want to make that change. So don't put that on the companies. Yeah, I, I mean, the counter to that is this app was a way for the people to rise up, and and now the companies are complicit in 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 making it harder uh, for people to rise up. Uh, if 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 that's the case, I think you're right though. If if I'm Tim Cook or Satya Nadella sitting in the United States, it'd be one thing if I were going to prison for this. You know, right. then yes, sure, maybe maybe I I take a stand. It's another thing to say my employees who didn't necessarily sign up for that, uh, you know, when they they signed up to be uh, executives or, or app store reviewers uh, in Russia. It's another thing to send them to prison in in Russia, where I'm I'm guessing their uh, prison experience might be a, a little different than yeah. it is here in the 100%, United States. Hundred percent. And honestly, you know. If, now, if they want to evacuate their employees and their families and then put the app back up, more power to them. But as long as you have people that, you know, you, the goal is not to make your own employees suffer, you know. So, uh, unfortunately, you know, when you have folks that try to rise up and try to make changes, there are going to be some obstacle and roadblocks along the way. That's to be expected. Hopefully they continue to fight and they continue to move and uh, do what they can to get the country that they want. Well, that's the difficult position they're in now, is Russia now knows, oh, if I threaten to imprison employees, I can get what I want. Uh, so I think rather than condemn Apple and Google for what they just did, I would look at what are you going to do now? You gonna pull out of the country? Because man, if you did that, I mean, obviously now you're sending your, your employees to, uh, out of work perhaps, but that would make a statement. Uh, are you going to do something else uh, to counter this? Are, are you going to protest? You know, I don't know what you do, but it's now right. now it's Google and Apple's move to counter this so that they don't end up being like, oh, okay, so if you put in CSAM protections in Russia, Russia can just tell you to also use it for something else. That's, you know, the worries right. are things along those lines. Yeah, so hopefully they do do exactly that. They find another way to help um, and to uh, allow these type of things. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know if, if it's necessarily fair at this point to give them grief about the decision. It's the right yeah, decision I'm, to make. I, it, it, it's, I don't want to come off as excusing them, but I, I'm with you where I'm not sure they had another move at, in exactly. this particular instance. Yeah. The, here's some happier news. The Netherlands fourth largest city Utrecht famous for the peace of Utrecht wants to become the first region in the world with bi-directional electric vehicle power. That would mean, in addition to the power grid charging vehicles, there would also be a system for what's called vehicle-to-grid, or V2G charging, where cars send power back into the grid. Utrecht has ordered 150 bi-directional Hyundai Ionic 5s by early 2022. Utrecht has also ordered a fleet of 100 Scion, S-I-O-N, solar electric vehicles from Sono Motors. Scion vehicles have 54 kilowatt hour batteries and will work with Utrecht's 500 bi-directional chargers. Since the solar car can recharge in the sun, it'll be able, when it's not driving itself, to feed up to 11 kilowatts into the grid. It can also directly charge other EVs or even power homes. All 100 Scions combined could provide 1.1 megawatt peak power to the city. That's about the same as a photovoltaic plant the size of two football fields. And this is in Europe, but, you know, soccer and a gridiron field about the same. So, you know, works either way. The Scions and the Ionic 5s will work with WeDrive Solar's solar-powered car sharing system. So the way this works is they'll have these bi-directional uh, vehicles charging themselves up and then feeding uh, into the grid from their the solar arrays. Uh, until they're ready to be used by somebody who wants to drive them somewhere as part of this car sharing issue. So there's two parts of this that I absolutely love. One, this is technology that can remove the additional hesitation or excuses of why we shouldn't be going down this path at a faster rate, right? Because one of the things you constantly hear is how can the system handle charging all these cars? In fact, I was at the uh, 
at the car wash the other day and I told her she lady was admiring my truck and I was like, well, I put a deposit on the, uh, the F-150 electric. And she was like, I just wonder how the grid can handle all these, you know, power. So it's even just regular people, little old lady, they all consider this. And you're like, well, actually they'll be contributing to the grid. Love that. The second yeah. part that I love about this, it's not coming in five years or 10 years. They're talking about next year that they're starting to put these devices out. And that's the problem when you find, you hear of like a lot of these announcements, they're so far out, but this is not the case with this one. Love those two pieces. Yeah, I think this is really interesting uh, to watch. Uh, great that Utrecht is willing to try it. And I think it was in the Netherlands. It was somewhere in Northern Europe where they were testing roadways that could charge cars as you drove over them. Uh, so imagine if you throw that in the mix where where the cars can charge not just from the sun, but from the road while they're driving. Uh, I, there There is... Uh, you can you can imagine a world in the future where you know cars are just always powered and and range anxiety just becomes something we're like oh remember back in the old days when grandpa <laughs> had to worry about range on his electric right. vehicle yeah yeah love it so, yeah it's crazy all right tell us about this new IKEA line of furniture so the uh, IKEA partnered with ASUS to bring out a collection of gaming oriented furniture. And uh, and in October, it will launch for the rest of the world. Some of the items in the so-called gaming range are existing IKEA items like pegboards, but there are a few gaming specific items, including gaming chairs ranging from $69 to $349, gaming desks for around $599, as well as a CPU stand with wheels. There are also smaller accessories like a headset stand, mouse, bungee cord, mug holder, ring lights, and mouse pads. So they definitely kind of went all out with this. Um, there are uh, the piece, the pieces come in black with red accents, which I love, echoing ASUS's ROG gaming lineup. But you can also get some of them in white. There are about thirty gaming products across six product families. So I actually took a look at some of this stuff and. The furniture, not so exciting, but the accessories actually looked pretty cool. What do you think? Yeah, uh, the furniture is pretty basic, right? It's it's IKEA stuff. Uh, yeah. So you know the, these chairs kind of look like office chairs with red piping on them. Yes, uh, I, I, I imagine there's something more to it. Uh, but at first glance, it's probably not going to knock you out as a gaming chair. Although there's there's one of them uh, that has like the the diamond pads and the and the yeah. you know the the higher neck, which my wife has a gaming chair that she got for work from home. It kind of uh -huh. looks like that. So I don't know. It, those are the kinds of things you definitely want to go try them out. You want to go yeah. to an IKEA and sit in one, right? So the uh, the file cabinet with the little hook on the side, I actually thought that one looked pretty cool from the furniture standpoint. But the the most even though it's like kind of resurfaced old stuff, which is what gaming items tend to be. The pegboard looked pretty cool. Um, the straps that they had to kind of strap up your keyboard or your controller. Um, although I don't know how you you know, necessarily charge your controller while it's strapped up there. Good but point. if you, you know, if you're going <laughs> away uh, for some time and you just want to pack everything up and keep it nice and neat, you know, it, you know, I think some folks uh, will, will will enjoy this. It's it's not my style of, of stuff, but uh, you know, the headset hook. I'm actually been looking for one of those. So if anything, I might I might actually scoop that. Um, are you gonna you're gonna get the headset hook, or do you want to get the wooden block headset hand that holds your headset? <laughs> fake hand. I'm just going to do the hook. <laughs> this creepy hand sitting on my desk. Like, give me high five while I'm gaming. Really I'm sure somebody's going to love, love it out there. And I apologize to that person. But Yes, I, I, I apologize as well. But, no, but, you know, interesting nonetheless. I, I think the one that caught my eye the most was that that CPU stand with wheels. And that's nothing yeah. new. Uh, but but it looks solid, you know. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, that, that that's a great thing to have. You can just wheel that thing out. So, uh, I'm not sure what they're charging for the CPU stand, though. I, I didn't find a price on that yet. But. And to be fair, you know, the lights do look pretty cool, right? With that, you know, that, that the typical Asus. CPU, yeah. yeah, Asus, you know, look and feel. So for a younger fella who who doesn't mind having their whole room lit up in neon, you know, I could definitely see that as something that was pretty interesting. Now, listen, um, 
we know we got a few people who punch through the firewall in China and get the show. So if any of you uh, tried this out, because China got this earlier in the year uh, and want to let us know what you think and, and can figure out how to get us an email, let us know. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Or if anybody's jumping on it right away and they're like, yeah, I went down to the Ikea immediately and bought some stuff, let us know. Uh, hey, if you like tech news, uh, <laughs> you're in the right place, first of all. We kind of assume you like tech news if you're listening to us. You're going to want to check out the Tech John, uh, J-A-W-N podcast featuring Rob Dunwood, Terrence Gaines, and Stephanie Humphrey. The Tech John takes a second look at the week's tech headlines delivered from an African-American perspective. Pilot episode received so much positive feedback during our experiment week that Rob has turned it into a full show. The first episode is out. You can go get it at thetechjohn.com. Uh, again, that's T E C H J A W N uh, dot com. Uh, they talk about uh, people stealing stuff on TikTok. They talk about the the need for a dumb TV. They talk about ransomware at uh, historically black universities like Howard. Uh, so go check that out, thetechjohn.com. Brand new podcast. You're going to want to have it in your feeds. Protocol sources say Google's plan to add free TV channels to Google TV and is currently in talks with several free ad-supported streaming television channels. This is similar to what Samsung, LG, Vizio, and Amazon do on their devices. The industry calls these kinds of services free ad-supported streaming television or fast channels. They usually show you a cable TV-like grid of free streaming channels. You can see this kind of presentation on Zumo, Pluto, or Roku's app. For Google TV, the free channels would reportedly appear in a dedicated live TV menu and show up alongside over-the-air programming on smart TVs. Google may have deals in place by this autumn, but may wait to launch the feature in 2022. Content makers have been experimenting with multiple fast channels that show up on multiple services. AMC Networks has a Walking Dead channel and a Portlandia channel. Smaller outfits like Rotten Tomatoes also offer free channels. So this is good. And the reason why I like it is because I looked at my last Hulu bill and almost fell out of my chair. It was over $70. And that was not what I started out with. So if content creators gravitate to this because just another way to kind of get their content out and they making good stuff, I I'm so ready to drop Hulu as well. It's so <laughs> expensive. And this, I'm like right back where I was. Well, you're, TV. You're, getting the, you're getting the live TV service. I am to be clear. getting live TV. Because some people are like, how do you spend $70 on Hulu? That's you, you, it, yeah, The live yeah. TV service is the bulk of that, I'm guessing, right? To be fair, yes. Yeah, it yeah. is the live TV. But it didn't start out as that expensive. Yeah. It was a great replacement for direct TV. And uh, now I'm just, you know, I'm looking for other content. And I don't really watch it that much. My wife still and my daughter. still cheaper than does. direct TV, though. Oh, direct TV 100%. Like 90, $100, right? Oh, yeah. easy. Easy, easy, easy. Yeah. So any avenue for folks to creators, because there's a lot of talented people that may never make it through a network gatekeeper, but can use a service like this. And all of a sudden you're watching some hilarious stuff, you know, you know somewhere else. And I'm all for it. So, you know, all alternative avenues, as well as the ability to allow me to drop this price. <laughs> of my I have a feeling that this might be where we're headed. Uh, the popularity of these free streaming channels is essentially the internet version of broadcast television versus Peacock, Netflix, Hulu. They're all the internet version of HBO Showtime. And, and in fact, HBO Showtime are part of that too, right? Uh, I wonder if we're headed to whatever device you have, whether it's your smart TV, your Chromecast, your Roku, they will all have a built-in free streaming grid with it. And that'll be the way people think about TV. Like I get it on my device and then I can choose if I want to add channels for premium shows. I can choose HBO Max. I can choose Peacock. Right. I can, you know, I can choose one or one of the other of those uh, instead of right now where everybody thinks, well, I have to pay to get everything. Right. I, I think we'll get over that. I think people won't have to see everything because they'll have some free TV here. It's like, yeah, OK, maybe I don't get The Walking Dead early. Uh, but there's a whole channel of it so I can right. catch up. I, I think patterns, pattern behaviors might change because of that. And the, the other, you know, p potential uh, side effect of this is you're starting to see um, a lot of content creators on YouTube who are having their content taken down um, because, you know, a network has hit them with uh, some kind of cease and desist, even though 
you know, a, a lot of times they're, you know, false claims. They just want to drop their content. So, you know, the network content can take a rise. So, you know, and, you know, obviously Google, I mean, you makes money from these guys. So they don't even ask questions. So having alternative locations for a lot of these news folks to be able to put their content so they don't have to experience those type of takedowns would be an awesome thing to happen. Yeah, and Lion Jim Video in chat asked uh, a question I didn't even think of. He's like, does Google require subscription to its core channels to watch the free channels? And the answer is no. That's not the none of these services do. If you get the Roku app uh, or if you fire up Pluto or, or Zumo, you're just watching TV. Now, it's yeah. not the most recent thing. It's not like the premium HBO Netflix uh, shows, but it's streaming right there for free. In fact, Fubo even has originals and stuff and is entirely free. It's ad supported. That's the rub, right? right. You have to sit through ads. Yep. Yep. And oh, then, and thank you. Thank you for uh, mentioning Rotten Tomatoes where my wife works. Oh. She's actually in charge of that channel, which is why, <laughs> which is why I wrote that in and made Chris say it. But oh I, my goodness. You know, I needed to disclose that. Slide that in there for you. No problem. <laughs> Uh, a paper published Monday in the journal Nature Communications describes using an algorithm to discover why creative artists, painters, writers, filmmakers often have what are called creative hot streaks. Uh, CNET used Van Gogh as an example with its uh, with his famous sunflower paintings or Starry Night or the bedroom paintings. Those all came within a few years, while most of his life's work is uncelebrated. He painted for decades. To examine these hot streaks, the scientists used algorithms originally designed for autonomous cars to scan creative works. For artists, it would look at things like brushstroke trends or linear orientation or the use of objects in the paintings. For film, it would look at things like cast selection, what genres did they work in, the plot structure. For scientists, they would look at which publications they were in, what kind of citations did they use. They analyzed thousands of examples of these hot streaks and came up with a pattern. The algorithms discovered that the hot streak manifests in artists that move from what they call an exploratory period to an exploitative period. So some artists make this transition, some don't. But when an artist made this transition, they were likely to have a hot streak. The exploratory period is characterized by experimenting with diverse styles and topics. You try a bunch of different things. You're not always doing it the same way. The exploitative period is more focused on a particular way of doing things. Artists that continuously evolve and experiment all the time, or artists that are always focused on a single angle, don't experience a hot streak. They may have celebrated works, just not all in a short period like Van Gogh. Other examples of the hot streak include Jackson Pollock's drip period between 1947 and 1950, or Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy. Van Gogh and Pollock both had a lot of variance in brush movements before their hot streaks. They were trying all different kinds of things. And Peter Jackson worked in a lot of different genres with a lot of different cast choices before Lord of the Rings when he focused. While this work identifies how a hot streak begins, the scientists are gonna continue to do research and they hope to discover how to tell what sparks a hot streak before it begins, what causes artists to make that change, and possibly whether they can do things to maintain it for longer. Yeah, Just so keep coming with the hits. Keep bringing the hits. Um, this is really cool. And w when I first read it, I was like, eh, okay, some more sciencey stuff. But when I started thinking about, well, geez, they, you know, they just mentioned, you know, movies and stuff like that, uh, as far as where they've already taken the 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 science. I just started thinking about, okay, look at your your favorite hip hop artist, and when you know, you'll have these. Uh, records that are trash and then all of a sudden boom the next three records are out of this world and then they go back to making trash um you know uh, sports you know when a player comes up and then all of a sudden he's unstoppable you just name your sport and your athlete you know it happens quite a bit so being able to extrapolate this and then if it becomes something that you know small companies can take on it's like okay you know you got your small company and then all of a sudden you kind of yeah, you because know, you think about it, what they said makes sense, right? You're exploring around, you're trying to find out what works, and then you hit something, and then you focus down your interests and your actions to what hit, and all of a sudden, boom, you're off and running. So I, I really like this this science, and hopefully something more comes out of it. Yeah, I mean, and and the technology of this obviously is 
this is something that maybe now you could say like, oh, I could have figured that out, but you didn't. Right. <laughs> Nobody did until <laughs> right. they could look at the algorithm, until they could have the algorithm look and go like, oh, no, 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 we're finding that transition. We're finding that point where things change. And we're finding it across different disciplines. We're right. finding it in painters. We're finding it in filmmakers. We're finding it in scientists. So, yeah, I mean, just just you talking right now, I'm like, maybe maybe Jay-Z just kind of knows this. And that's why he's like, yeah, my hot streak's over. I know that's why I'm not making any more albums. <laughs> yeah, right. Just, like, just in business now. I'm good. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm he, he's, maybe he's going for a new hot streak right? In, <laughs> right. in business. Well. Right. And maybe that's the answer is like, you can have multiple hot streaks, maybe not all in the same discipline, but so if you can manage that transition. I don't know. That's fascinating. Andy. All right. Earlier this week, LG announced the Direct View LED, the DV LED home cinema display lineup, which ranges from a 108 inch HD screen up to a 325 inch 8K panel that'll only cost you one point seven million dollars and weighs more than two thousand pounds. So the shipping will also be very expensive. <laughs> LG reserved these displays in the past for commercial buyers, but they've decided to start selling them to, to any anybody. I say anybody, anybody that can afford $1.7 million. Uh, so if you have the cash, now you can buy one. The displays use LEDs, with some using smaller micro LEDs, according to CNET. Uh, that's not unlike what we've seen from Samsung's The Wall or Sony's Crystal LED lineup. I, I feel like these really are the way of taking these big commercial displays and starting to make the transition into the home, right? You you sell it to the millionaires first to kind of prove the concept and 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 work out the kinks, and then eventually you scale it down to something that maybe you or I could afford. Yeah, so I, I definitely put a deposit on one. Um, and I'll probably <laughs> get it in my third lifetime. Can but, you do uh, a live with it on that? <laughs> when you, yeah, I'll, that'd be great. Right on. And and I, I first I thought, you know, this is a flex so that folks can say I got the biggest TV. But now I'm like, well, you know what? COVID's still there. So all they're doing is doing this so people can watch TV from their own homes <laughs> into somebody else's home. <laughs> yeah. You know, in a way, this kind of reminds me what uh, AM, uh, American General did, the makers of the Hummer vehicle when they originally just sold mm. to the U.S. government. And a very famous action movie star was starting to drive one around Hollywood. And suddenly there was a lot of consumer interest in the Hummer. And that kind of segued that particular product uh, into a broader audience. So I'm wondering yeah. if, you know, yeah, they're looking sure. at, hey, you're building a new house. You might want a wall that has this. Right. If you're the kind of person that won't miss $1.7 million, your house is probably big enough for this 325-inch 8K panel. So, oh, <laughs> oh man. Uh, well, uh, if anybody out there gets one of these, please let us know. <laughs> Feedback at yes. dailytechnewshow.com and, and support us on Patreon uh, if, if, if you're that person, too. Hey, uh, speaking of people who support us on Patreon, you don't have to be able to afford a $1.7 million TV to do that. Uh, and uh, even though we broke our streak yesterday, we've started a new one thanks to James White and Turning Bones. Uh, brand new bosses backing us on Patreon, keeping us above the zero level, making sure that they're picking up for the people who are, you know, maybe struggling a little and can't keep supporting the Patreon. So thank you, James White. Thank you, Turning Bones, uh, for backing us on Patreon and starting the new streak. Who will keep the streak going tomorrow? Let us know by becoming a Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash DTNS. Thank you, Len Peralta, for being with us to illustrate today's show. What have you drawn today, Len? You know, you know, I um, I hope I haven't hit my hot streak yet, but maybe this image, um, is is the start of it. You know, uh, you forget uh, that some that I'm a I'm also a graphic designer, right? I'm also mm -hmm. along being an illustrator, uh, and uh, I um, I'm a big fan of IKEA and their advertising, and I just thought this would be a fun way of you know, it's it basically is an ad. For their uh, for for their gaming uh, collection, uh, but here you have all these you know they have all these names of uh, their furniture. Oops, I'm not even gonna try them. Oops, spell, uh, match Oops spell, spell, match Oops spell. spell. <laughs> yeah, spell um, and then underneath it says your party has logged on. They, so are these names of the furniture or are these yeah. screen are names of people you can be playing? Yeah, yeah, or or yes. are they? Yeah. 
I don't know. That's what we're, that's, uh, I guess it's for us to figure out. Um, but if you're into Ikea and you like, the, you like ads, graphic design ads, uh, you can get this right now. Uh, if you're my Patreon subscriber, patreon.com forward slash Len, or actually at my online store, which is lenperaltastore.com, where there's all kinds of other great stuff you can pick up for yourself. So check it out and, uh, go Ikea. Yeah, and in case it's not obvious, uh, IKEA didn't pay Len or uh, any of us <laughs> for this. No, I, no. Len's, Len's just doing this uh, for for kicks, but yeah, they should good. hire you. Honestly, this is really I, good. Definitely, I agree. Uh, Chris Ashley, thank you, my friend, uh, for being with us today. What do you got going on to tell the folks about? Uh, so the newest episode of the SMR podcast just went up. Go on and check that out. Me and Rob doing a chicken wings and beer version, which is a lot looser. If it can get any looser. And because you asked for it, it's coming very soon. We will have episode one of Barbecue on Tech. Yeah, keep keep your eyes peeled. We will tell you about it when it is ready to go. But but like any any good barbecue, you know, you gotta you gotta let it cook for a while. Gotta right? let it gotta let it cook. Gotta let it let it let it simmer. Gotta let it baste. Ah man, I'm looking forward to that. Hey folks, don't forget we are live Monday through Friday, uh, 4:30 p.m. Eastern, 20:30 UTC. Find out more at DailyTechNewsShow.com/live. Now I'm off Monday working on Know a little more, but Sarah Lane will be here with Rich Trappolino and Rob Dunwood. So we'll Ooh. see you next week. This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show were created by the following people. Host, producer, and writer, Tom Merritt. Host, producer, and writer, Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker, Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and host, Rich Straffolino. Video producer, Twitch producer, Joe Kuntz. Associate producer, Anthony Lemos. Spanish language host, writer, and producer, Dan Campos. News host, writer, and producer, Jen Cutter. Science correspondent, Dr. Nikki Ackermans. Social media producer and moderator, Zoe Dederty. Our mods, Beatmaster, W. Scottis One, BioCow, Captain Kipper, Jack Shid, Steve Guadarrama, Paul Reese, Matthew J. Stevens, and J.D. Galloway. Mod and video hosting provided by Dan Christensen. Video feed maintained by Sean Way. Music and art provided by Martin Bell, Dan Luters, Mustafa A, Acast, Creative Ast Arts, and Len Peralta. And live art performed by Len Peralta. Acast ad support from Trace Gaynor. Patreon support from Stefan Brown. Contributors for this week's shows include Scott Johnson, Justin Robert Young, and Chris Ashley. Guests on this week's show included Sherlyn Lowe, Nika Monford, and Terrence Gaines. And thanks to all our patrons who make the show possible. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>